prices at the pumps, as well as growing mortgage costs tied to higher interest rates, drove inflation higher in July, reversing a trend of cooling inflation. In June, when we saw that rate fall to 2.8, it was like, oh, okay, great. We're we're back into the range and we're headed towards that 2% target. And of course, this does deviate from that trend. Mortgage costs soared by more than 30% in July. Food prices at grocery stores climbed nearly 9%, mainly because of prices for fresh fruit and baked goods. The silver lining? That was the slowest pace of food inflation in more than a year. And airfares tumbled 12.7%. Still, the cumulative effect of sticker shock is hitting household budgets. When we compare prices this year to last year, it might look like inflation have gone down, whereas for families, for households and businesses, prices are still very high. The Bank of Canada has said it takes many things into account for interest rate decisions. Inflation, the job market, economic growth. That includes the impact of higher rates on household budgets and debt. For now, the majority of economists don't foresee a September rate hike. It takes between 18 and 24 months for interest rate hikes to fully ripple through the economy. And we just had another hike in July, so I think September they're not going to hike. When they're looking at how they should respond to inflation, they, they realize that there's some factors that they control and some that they can't. You know, and one of the factors that they don't have any influence over, at least themselves, is, you know, the global price of oils. The price of oil is expected to moderate this fall, and there are signs of a cooling economy already in the labour market with a rising unemployment rate. Anne Gaviola, Global News, Toronto.